Good morning. This is the Way of the Cross broadcast, and I'm Brother Noel Hawks. I hope that you can stay with us for the entire broadcast as we try one more time to lift up the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, it is a great joy to be with you again this week. We appreciate the opportunity that we have to be able to come and share a message from God's eternal Word. And it is a good day that the Lord hath made. And we appreciate all the goodness of God and His blessings in our life. Uh, we're living in some days today that has got uh, the world turned upside down. But I'm glad that our faith in the Lord can still be strong. And I appreciate everything that the Lord has done for me. And uh, I'm glad that no matter what's going on around me, my salvation is secure in Jesus Christ. And He said that He was the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but through Him. And so I'm thankful today that salvation is not in uh, world happenings, but salvation is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I hope that uh, you know Him personally as your Savior today. Well, we appreciate you that have tuned us in. And many of you are shut into your homes anyway, not able to get out as, as you would normally like to do. Many of you normally would be getting ready for church at this time. And a lot of churches have closed uh, due to the spread of the coronavirus. And that's an awful thing to even have to talk about. I hate that that's the topic of conversation, but it is. And uh, God has given us wisdom, and God has given us uh, direction about how we should uh, work and do things uh, during this time. Now let me say this about churches. God directs different men of God in different ways. Every situation is not the same. And so I certainly understand uh, that people make different decisions, but we have chosen uh, at Liberty Baptist Church down in Moxville, North Carolina, where the Lord has allowed me to pastor. Uh, we have chosen uh, not to have services until April the 5th, which is the first Sunday of the month of April. And so that means uh, that our Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night as normal uh, is not normal now. And so we're not going to be having services uh, regular services as we would. But uh, what we are going to do is today at 11 o'clock, we're going to have a parking lot service. A lot of churches have done this. I've seen where other churches have done this. And I believe it's a good way to meet together without having to get close uh, and spreading anything that, you know, because we don't know. Uh, but we can meet together. We're going to set up a sound system there in the parking lot, just something simple. And we're going to have people park in traffic and uh, we're going to bring them in. We're going to have maybe a song or two and a short message from God's Word. And I'm looking forward to what the Lord has for us today. Uh, God, uh, God is in control, and we're going to trust Him. And, uh, and so that's exactly what we desire to do. And uh, hopefully radio broadcasts such as this and others that uh, are put on the air, uh, they can be a source of help and strength and comfort to you if you're not able to get out. Now, many churches have live stream services on the Internet. If you can find some of those, I know that that would be great. Uh, if you can, go to Liberty Baptist Church, Moxville, North Carolina, and find our Facebook page. Uh, Lord willing, we're going to live stream from the parking lot uh, this morning. Now, a month ago, I never would have dreamed I would have said that, but we're going to do that, Lord willing, today. And so if you go to Liberty Baptist Church, uh, Moxville, North Carolina, Find our Facebook page, hit like, and then you can bring up the live stream. Also, this broadcast that's airing right now has been recorded uh, when this broadcast was recorded, and it's going to be put on that page as well. And so you can see uh, the broadcast, and, and hopefully it'll be a source of help and strength. I believe we all need to pull together in times like this and help each other. And uh, we're not in competition among churches. We love other churches. And we love the work that they're doing. We want all of it to continue on. We want America to rebound and be strong. But most of all, uh, we want America to turn to God. We need God more than any other thing. And so let me encourage you to do that. Now let me say this. We had revival scheduled for this week, starting tomorrow night through Friday night. Brother Leonard Fletcher was going to be with us again, as he has been many times. And he won't be able to be with us this year. We had to cancel that. But we're going to make that up at another date. But that's all right. We're going to make it. Uh, but let's pray together. Let's ask God to help us. 
And we want to share with you a message this morning I hope will be a blessing to you. Let's pray together. Father, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we have to be able to share the message of God's Word. I pray today, Lord, that you'll speak to hearts, help people to uh, understand what your Word says. And God, help us to be obedient to it. And I pray, Lord, if there's one listening today that does not know you as their personal Savior, that they'll trust you today. And Lord, put faith in Jesus Christ before it's eternally too late. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning in the book of Psalms, Psalm 121, the Bible says in verse 1, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Now those are some comforting words from God's word. And I appreciate what the Lord has shared with us here. And I believe we can uh, gather some things from this this morning that will help us. Now, I want to preach on the thought of looking to God from your valley. Now, this is a great statement that we find in verse number 1. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Now, there's a couple of things that we see uh, in that statement. I will lift up mine, my, mine eyes. This statement tells us two things. Number one, it tells us that he was in a valley. The psalmist here was in a valley. Now, a valley, if you look up a definition of a valley, it's a depression that is longer than it is wide. In other words, a valley in our lives speaks of that which brings us low. It's a depression. I don't like that word depression. And many of you probably have battled with some sort of depression in your life. You've went through things and you've been in low times in your life and you didn't know where to turn. And the psalmist here said, I will lift up mine eyes. That tells me he was in a valley. He was in a low place because he had to look up to the hills. That also tells me that he knew to look up. He knew that he could. And so he knew that there was someone there. Now, a couple of things this morning. First of all, our problems, uh, let's see our problems in the valley. Let me just break it down in different walks of life. Let me start with the lost. If you're unsaved today, you're in a valley of sin. And sin has brought you low. Uh, sin will always bring you down. It'll never lift you up. Sin will always keep you in a valley. Sin will always destroy and it will always hinder you and hurt you. Uh, the, the sin that comes in our lives, uh, it is a valley of sin. And the only way you're going to get any help is to look up to the Lord. Look to Jesus. He's the only one that can save. I'm thankful today that Jesus saved me. November the 19th of 1980. And I trusted Him as a seven-year-old boy. And I'm glad when I was in my valley of sin that I looked up and God was there. And He was willing to save me. And He did save me. I not only see the lost, but the bereaved are in a valley of sorrow. Oh, what a what a valley that some have went through. And, and even now in our church, a dear uh, couple in our church, dear lady in our church, her mother's just passed away. And uh, they're in a valley of sorrow. But I'm glad we can look up. I'm glad we can go to God. But here we see also the believers in a valley of struggle. You know, the, the world and life of all sorts, animal life, uh, everything is in a struggle. Uh, and Christians are not exempt. I go through struggles in my life. You go through struggles in your life. And that's a part of life. But let me also say the world is in a valley of separation. We're divided by countries. We're divided by ethnicity. We're divided by our social standings. We're divided today because of what we're calling social distancing. And we're told not to get uh, within six feet of other people. We're keeping our distance. There is a division. But also think about eternity. There is a division that takes place in eternity. And that is when those that are lost uh, die lost without God and go to hell. And those that are saved that have trusted Christ, they go to heaven. There is a separation. And the, the greatest separation is to be separated from God. 
but we see that the world today is in a valley of separation. I'm looking forward to the day when we get to heaven with all of God's saints. And we can fellowship together. We can enjoy the presence of God together. We can walk the street of gold and enjoy all that the Lord has for us. And so we see our problems in the valley. But then secondly, we see our perspective from the valley. The psalmist here was looking past the hills and he was looking to the Lord. The Bible says in verse number one, he, was, he lifted up his eyes. Uh, he said, from whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord. Now the Bible says about the Lord here, which made heaven and earth. Now, that God that made heaven and earth is worth looking to. He is our only hope. If you're in a valley today, and we all get in valleys, but if you're in a valley, especially if you're lost and uh, you've never been saved, you've never trusted Christ, uh, His death, burial, and resurrection for your salvation, then you are in a valley. The only hope we have is Jesus. The only hope we have. There is no hope in religion. There is no hope in the world. There is no hope in a vaccine or there is no hope in a, a political plan. The only hope that we have today is in the Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone. And so we see our perspective. When we're in the valley and we look up, we see from the valley, the Lord, my help cometh from the Lord. I can testify to that today. The only hope that I have, the only hope that you have, will come from the Lord. Let me ask you today, what valley are you in? Are you lost? Are you in a valley of sin? Are you going through a battle? Are you in that valley of struggle? What valley are you in today? Let me say that God is the one that we need to be looking to. Let me say four things that we find here in the Scripture that we can see when we look to the Lord. Number one, He will hold you up. It says in verse 3, He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Aren't you glad that all God's people uh, will be held secure because God is holding on to us? Hey, we would all lose our footing without God's grace. But because of God's grace, our foot will not slip. And I'm thankful for that today. So He'll hold you up. Second thing is, he will not sleep. The Bible says, he that keepeth thee will not slumber. Oh, I'm glad that our, head, our eyes sometimes may get heavy, but the eyes of the Lord will never get heavy. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. If you're in a valley today, look up. Look to the Lord from whence cometh our help. The Lord is the only help that we have today. So he will not sleep. They also say about him, he will protect you. The Bible says in verse 5, The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Here the Bible speaks of the protective hand of God. I'm glad that I have a God today, no matter what I'm going through, no matter if we're uh, quarantined, no matter if we're uh, losing our loved ones, no matter if we're going through battle after battle, we are protected by God. God is going to watch over us. And by the way, if you get sick and we do cross over into heaven, we're going to get our healing. And thank God that our healing comes uh, through the Lord. And we have eternal healing through Jesus Christ. But the Bible says He will protect us. I'm glad God is a protector. And He will protect you and me. Let me say lastly, this God that we speak of, that we should be looking to from our valley, is a God who will preserve us. The Bible says in verse 7, The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. Aren't you glad? The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even for evermore. Let me say this about God's preservation. God preserves His Word, and I say hallelujah to that, and God preserves His people. God is watching over you and me. God is going to protect us. God is going to watch over us. Let me encourage you today, if you're in a valley, look up. Look to Jesus. Jesus is the only way, and He'll help you. I thank you for listening. Until next time, God bless you is our prayer.